Good morning, New Lifers, and everyone who's joining us online for this special day. As you can see, we're recording from our kitchen, from our home. So from our home to your home, hello and welcome. And we really trust that this would be a special weekend for you as you just focus on Jesus and remember what he's done for you through the death, the burial and the resurrection. Yes, a warm welcome from the Star Kitchen. Uh, you can relax. I am not the new Gordon Ramsay. Uh, I have such a peace, even though I have concerns just like you. Uh, my prayer, along with yours, is that the storm that's tried to uh, destroy our nation and the nations of the world, that it would bypass our land. Uh, my prayer is that we would experience another Passover, just like that in the Old Testament, when death passed over the children of Israel and they were supernaturally protected and delivered. And the nation began to prosper. My prayer is that we as a nation will actually begin to prosper and that God will be glorified. I also believe it's a time to not grow weary in well-doing, for you shall reap if you faint not. Let's be a people that are committed to faith and prayer. Amen. Let's continue to pray with believers all around the world at this time, praying for breakthrough, praying for God's provision, praying for God's peace and his protection. 2 Chronicles 7.14 tells us that we must not forget to pray, that we must unite together, we must seek God's face, we must repent, and when we do this, He will come and He will heal our land. So church, let's not forget to pray. Um, on our website, on our, on our social media platforms, we have a prayer focus for each week, so please log in, continue to join with us, continue to pray with us, and we trust in God for breakthroughs in this world today. We have something special for you today. Uh, some time ago, I sensed in my heart that I needed to preach on the King's table for our Good Friday message. And then as you know, we all went into lockdown and that created some challenges around recordings. And uh, so I had an idea. I looked at the message I did several years ago and I really sensed a special grace on it. And I really believe it will encourage every one of us and it captures the heart of the Good Friday message and also encourages us in light of what we're going through. Please excuse my um, swollen six pack. Uh, I was a little different to what I was today, uh, but God's grace and I believe the Holy Spirit's gonna encourage you and speak to you uh, as we enjoy what Jesus has done for us. Have you ever been in a place where you could say that you were wounded, maybe forsaken, felt like there was no one there to really care for you all alone, and you met somebody in that moment that showed you amazing kindness. And as a result of them showing that kindness, it lifted your soul, it encouraged you, it gave you hope, and it changed your life. You almost feel that kindness, that grace that was shown to you rescued you. Today I want to speak about the King's Table. The King's Table. A true story about a young crippled boy who felt alone, felt wounded, forsaken, lost his dad, lost his grandfather. And in his journey, he encounters the kindness and the compassion of a king. The name of the king is King David. The young crippled boy, his name is Mephibosheth. And I just want to read the last verse from 2 Samuel chapter 9, verse 13, a book in the Bible. And this is how the story ends. It says, So Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem, for he ate continually at the king's table, and he was lame in both his feet. When Mephibosheth was born, his name was filled with hope and anticipation. The name Mephibosheth means dispeller of shame, that he would drive away shame. But his sad reality was that he was born at a time of great shame in his own family. His grandfather was the king of Israel. And he established this kingdom that went on to ruin by the things that he did. And he died a horrible, horrible death in battle. And so the end of Saul's life, King Saul's life was filled with shame. In that same battle, Mephibosheth's father, Jonathan, the son to King Saul, Jonathan also dies in battle. And the family had always had great hopes 
on Jonathan. He was the good one in the family. And they believed that he would be able to fulfill the future of their family. That had been declining in such a shameful and embarrassing way. And so when both Saul and Jonathan died, news went out that there was going to be a new king, King David. And it was presumed in those days that whenever a new king came to power, that they had to destroy the members of the family of the preceding king. And Mephibosheth was one of them. And so the interesting thing is, no one really knew the heart of David. David's heart was opposite to what should have been done in those days. And David, even though he was a man, was a beautiful picture of the heart of God, showing compassion and grace to someone who didn't deserve it. And so here, David comes to power when Mephibosheth is born and the family nurse looking after Mephibosheth, when she hears of this new king, she's filled with fear and she runs. And as she's running, she trips with the little baby Mephibosheth and he, she breaks both his feet and causes him to be crippled for the rest of his life. In one sense, it was unnecessary fear that drove her away from King David for she thought King David will destroy Mephibosheth. But she didn't understand his heart, his heart of mercy, his heart of kindness. Didn't understand that there'd been a covenant made between David and King Saul's son, Jonathan. And years later, Mephibosheth is still a young boy and David, King David finds out about Mephibosheth. And so, commands him to come to his palace. Obviously, Mephibosheth and the family nurse are terrified. They feel this is gonna, this is gonna cost them their lives. And Mephibosheth is amazed to hear King David's words. And this is what he says. He says, don't be afraid. He says, I intend to show kindness to you because of my promise to your father, Jonathan. I'll give you all the property that once belonged to your grandfather Saul and you will eat here with me at the king's table. David and Jonathan had a special relationship and they had made a promise with one another and David once said to Jonathan, Mephibosheth's dad, listen, I'm going to covenant with you that I will always look after your descendants. I will look after them. And you know, all for Mephibosheth's life, the Bible says that he was lame in both feet, but he sat at the king's table. That every need was cared for. There were moments in Mephibosheth's life that he felt, I do not belong here. I've been wounded, I've been forsaken, I've been shattered. My life has been broken because of my fall and just because of the shame around me. Even though my name might mean dispeller of shame, I feel so ashamed. But there he would sit at the king's table, experiencing compassion and grace. And so the story of David's kindness to Mephibosheth, I believe is the most tender and amazing illustration of God's kindness to sinful humanity. That here our God comes to our rescue. And when we are in our sin, our sorrow, our shame, feeling all alone, He comes to our rescue that God sends His Son to die on the cross for our sins so that we can enjoy a personal relationship with Him forever. John 3, 16 captures the heart of Easter when it says, For God so loved the world, loved you, loved me, that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. Here, Mephibosheth felt, I don't belong here. This is a seat that doesn't belong to me. I'm not good enough, I shouldn't be cared for, I don't deserve this kindness and this grace. I should live a life of shame. And I think in certain ways, we can relate to Mephibosheth. That in certain ways in our own lives spiritually that we all crippled in terms of our capacity to rescue ourselves from our own sin. Crippled in terms of our capacity to save us, to save us from our sins. And all of us have been shattered or broken or injured by the impact of sin. Usually more than we know. It's interesting that it was fear that sent Mephibosheth in the arms of the family nurse away from the kindness of the king where she fell 
where he fell. And the same way sometimes I think our own sin causes us to run from God, run from Him. And what happens is we run away from a God that actually is so kind and generous and so loving. And we land ourselves up in a whole bunch of problems. Or one day we maybe consider that we never really look and see the light and the love of Christ. And we run in blindness, walk in blindness. And we fall, we injure ourselves, we damage ourselves. But sooner or later, we get to hear of a glorious message. A message of God so loving us. The mercy of God, the, that God's mercy is new every morning to every single one of us here and the rest of the world. And I believe in the same way that David invited Mephibosheth to his table, the king's table, to provide for his needs, to care for him, to show him love and compassion. So in the same way, Jesus invites us to His table, His table of redemption, His table of salvation, His table of love, a table of fellowship, a table of communion. But the table represents the cross, it represents Jesus and everything that He's done for us. 2,000 years ago, the night before, He's crucified. He's in the upper room and He asks His disciples, to prepare the food and he invites them to the Lord's Supper and here we have Jesus sitting with his disciples telling them that guys I'm going to have to die and in one sense it's going right over their heads they're not fully understanding the weight of this moment as they're sitting at the table with the king and so here Matthew tells us what happens that night he says while they were eating Jesus took bread gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body. And then he took the cup, gave thanks and offered it to them saying, drink from it all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for so many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you that I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's presence or Father's kingdom. What's so beautiful about this moment the Lord's table the disciples are sitting there and they the guests Jesus is the host and he is not being served but he is serving everyone Jesus is behind this whole moment he is the most active one at the table and so he is not portrayed as someone who's just reclining and just receiving and enjoying a dinner but rather he's the one who stands and serves and gives ultimately he will give his life, his body and his blood so that everyone can have new life in him. Offering spiritual life and care to everyone. And so that the Lord's Supper, the King's Table is a gift to you, it's a gift to me. We call it a sacrament. Where it's a, a, an outward sign of a spiritual reality. The spiritual reality of the death, the burial and the resurrection of Jesus that would cause us to enjoy forgiveness and rest and salvation so that God calls us to leave the chores of life and all the pressures and the struggles and now enter in to rest and salvation all because of the blood of Christ. And so the King's table, yes, it speaks of the cross. The bread and the blood, the bread and the wine represents the blood and the body of Jesus. I believe as we look at the king's table we just need to be reminded of two things that i believe it represents two things so many others but just just for us just to focus on this special good friday service that it's a table of thanksgiving it represents thanksgiving it's known as the table of thanksgiving many churches across the world millions and millions of christians people around the world will observe the lord's table today and the different names given to it, Mass, Communion, Lord's Table, Eucharist, which means to give thanks, to give thanks. I think just like Mephibosheth sitting at a table in one sense feeling so ashamed and I, I, I'm wounded, I'm forsaken, I, my, family's, my family's abandoned me, they've died, I'm the only one here crippled, I need to be carried wherever I go. And here, he must have sat there each night with the king thinking oh I'm so grateful that you came and rescued me 
Thank you for your compassion. Thank you for your kindness. And so in the same way, we say, Jesus, thank you for coming to me. Thank you for reaching out to me. Emmanuel, God with us. That you didn't have to, but because of your love and your mercy, you're prepared to come save us from our sins. And so at the king's table calls us to be filled with thanksgiving. To say, thank you, God. Thank you for coming, Jesus. You know, God knows that us as human beings, that we've all fallen short of the glory of God. Not one of us are perfect. Every one of us have made mistakes and sinned in some way or another. And God knows that because of that sin that's created a wall between us and God and that we live spiritual lives apart from God because of our sin. But God, because of His amazing kindness and His merciful and just, what He does is He comes as Jesus Christ as a man to, 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 to seek and to save and to serve. He comes on a rescue mission to save us from our own sins so that we can be one with God, to receive the righteousness of God. And so what happens, he lives a sinless life and he begins to declare that he is God, which ultimately leads him to his death. And then he's taken to a cross where he will now become the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. And here he becomes the substitute, the sacrifice for our sins. And the penalty of our sin cost death. And because of his blood, without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. The blood now satisfied the justice of God, for God is a just God. He cannot ignore sin. But he does something about it and he allows Jesus, his blood, to satisfy the justice of God. And as a result of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus, that middle wall, that barrier between us and God is now broken. Now we can experience peace eternal peace we can experience forgiveness we can experience the love of God in Jesus Christ that we can experience a right standing with God that you know that I'm now one with God I don't have to try and earn this this is just a oneness and a right standing with our God all because of what Jesus has done and so the beautiful thing about the cross the king's table it says this that God says I want to give you forgiveness for everything you have done wrong in your past that I want to give you peace eternal, that I want to give you power and purpose to help you live each day. I want to give you life in its fullness. I want to give you security for your future. I want to begin to remove the shame and the sin from you. And so at the Lord's table, we thank you for the gift of His coming, the gift of His dying, for shedding His blood for the forgiveness of our sins. And I was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I can see. That I was spiritually broken, shattered because of my own sin. Because I believe that if we're honest, there's an area of brokenness in every one of our souls. And here, shattered because of the fall, shattered because of sin, injured, crippled. That here God begins to heal and to bring wholeness and grace and love. A second thing before I close and we partake together. It's also a table of grace. The king's table represents grace. It's to receive grace for things we don't deserve. You know, when David invited Mephibosheth to come to him, Mephibosheth could not walk to the table. He literally had to be carried to the table every day to sit with the king. And I believe when Mephibosheth first arrived there, he was terrified. But here, David put his mind at ease and said, listen, I'll take care of you. And listen to what Mephibosheth says when he encounters David. At that moment, he says, Mephibosheth bowed down and said, what is your servant that you should notice a dead dog like me? Mephibosheth was filled with shame. Did not believe he deserved grace did not deserve this this favor, this blessing that this king was bestowing on him. And I believe in the same way God seeks to show kindness to so-called the dead dog, to those who have not nothing to offer him. Think that I don't belong here. But the beautiful thing is with Mephibosheth, he was given dignity. A man that was filled with shame was now given dignity. And I believe in the same way when we begin to understand what the cross really represents for us, God gives you a new dignity that's not determined by your past or your sins. 
It gives us forgiveness. I think Mephibosheth had no way of knowing that he would ever, that he would have everything needed for the rest of his life, all because of the grace of a king. He sat at the king's table, both lame in his feet. In one sense, it speaks to us of how our weakness, our sin, are linked to our past. The things that will cause every one of us shame. You know what happens? It's covered by the grace. It's covered by the grace of the king. In the same way, this Good Friday, God calls us to come to his table, to come under a grace that covers you, that saves you, that heals you, that strengthens you, that gives you a new life and meets all your needs. I think it's so beautiful, just the story how Mephibosheth had to be carried each night to the table to sit with the, the king. So in the same way, is a way in which when it comes to redemption and salvation that every one of us need to be carried, that we can't do it of our own cord. We need God's grace to save us. And it's a work of grace. Salvation is a work of grace. Listen to what Ephesians 2 verse 8 and 9 says, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith and this not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. So grace is God's favor. It's undeserved. It's unmerited that God gives us something we don't deserve. That's blessing, that's salvation, that's redemption, that's eternal peace. We deserve punishment, but we get mercy in place of punishment. And so God says, when a sinner turns to repentance, He says, though your sins are like scarlet, the Bible says they shall be as white as snow. And just before we pray, our sin cost Jesus his life and he did it because of grace it's not cheap grace sin whenever we've sinned it's cost us in certain ways but thank goodness for the mercy and the forgiveness and the justice of God and because of God's grace and because of his kindness to you he invites us to the table but look what he had to go through on Good Friday and Isaiah it says he was despised and rejected a man of sorrows acquainted with bitterest grief. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way when he went by. He was despised and he did not care and we did not care. Yet it was our weaknesses he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down and we thought his troubles were a punishment from God for his own sins. But he was wounded and crushed for our sins. He was beaten that we might have peace. He was whipped and we were healed. All of us have strayed away like sheep. We have left God's paths to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him the guilt and sins of us all. He was oppressed and treated harshly, yet he never said a word. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep is silent before the shearers, he did not open his mouth. From prison and trial, they led him away to his death. But who among the people realized that he was dying for their sins, that he was suffering their punishment? He had done no wrong and he never deceived anyone, but he was buried like a criminal. He was put in a rich man's grave. I didn't deserve the grace of God. I don't think anyone really deserved the grace of God. Romans 5 verse 8 says, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. In other words, when you and I were at our worst, God was at his best. And so I want to close with this. Maybe there's some of you here this morning that you feel like Mephibosheth, that you feel like you're not worthy or you failed in life or there's a shattering in your own soul, a brokenness or a shame or sorrow or something that torments you. Or maybe there's just the pressure or pain that you feel like is just too much to carry, too much to bear. I trust that this Good Friday would be a Good Friday to you. That you would understand that Jesus the King invites you to His table to offer you redemption, to offer you forgiveness, to say, listen, I'm here to remove your sin. I'm here to remove your shame, to bring healing, to take care of your spiritual needs, to give you life, to give you new life you'll see him looking at you saying I want to establish a relationship with you to help you to save you to heal you 
John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. May this Good Friday, no matter how far you are from God, no matter what darkness you've lived in, that you'd understand the King is inviting you to have a relationship with you. And He's made it available all because of grace. And so we approach Him with thanksgiving and we approach Him with embracing His beautiful grace that saves us and changes us, something we didn't deserve. I find it interesting that Mephibosheth, his name was Dispeller of Shame. But when everyone looked at him before he met the king's table, would just say, shame, shame, shame. A boy filled with shame. But after his encounter with the king, the shame was dispelled. He broke away. He lived, he lived up to the promise and the prophetic power of his own name, the Dispeller of Shame, all because of the kindness of a king. Can we bow our heads and pray just for a few moments? Lord, we thank you for your compassion. We thank you for your kindness. That Jesus, you left heaven to come to the earth as a man. That you lived among us. That you were acquainted with our feelings of infirmity and our weaknesses and our grief. That you're God that understands our pain, our struggles. That Jesus, you're the only one that ever walked this earth and lived a sinless life. That Jesus, you took our sins upon yourself. Lord, that we could enjoy forgiveness, could enjoy salvation, redemption, righteousness. Jesus, we thank you that you rose again the third day proving that you are God, that you conquered sin and the grave. Lord, as we listen to this beautiful song on being carried to the table, that we'd understand, Lord, it's all because of your love, it's all because of your grace. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're here, that you're encouraging hearts, strengthening minds, healing bodies, healing souls. We thank you that you invite us in to receive you as our Lord and Savior, to appreciate everything that you've done for us. In Jesus' name. We're going to partake together. We can just bow our heads just for a few moments. This is a special, holy, beautiful, transformational moment. I just want to address just the person that might maybe here for the very first time, or you've been coming to New Life for a while, and you know that deep in your heart, that you need God. If I had to ask you the question, have you come to the place in your spiritual life where you know for certain that if you were to die today, where you would spend eternity? The Bible says that we can know that we have eternal life. And it's all because of Jesus. Only because of Jesus. So Jesus is here not to condemn or judge anyone, but He's here to offer you forgiveness and new life and so if that's you just before we partake because it's so important that every one of us who partakes understands the meaning behind the king's table and so if you want to make right with God knowing that he's not here to judge you or condemn you but he's here to offer you love offer you compassion and kindness like he's offered so many of us in this room and all it is is just a prayer away just between you and God could you just pray, pray this simple prayer just say dear Jesus Thank you for loving me so much that you were prepared to die for my sins. Forgive me of my sins, Jesus. I believe in my heart that you rose from the dead, proving that you are God. I open the door of my heart and invite Jesus to be my Savior. Save me from my sins. Jesus, be my Lord. Take control of my life and make me to the person you've created me to be. Amen. Amen. For those who've just prayed that prayer for the first time, God bless you. One of the most beautiful moments, according to the scriptures and heaven, is that there's celebration when one sinner, one person who is far from God, 
humbles himself and puts their trust in Christ alone for salvation, which is what Good Friday is. It's a Good Friday for every person in the world that we can receive such grace. We can just, thank you, lovey. We have a gift for you, free Bible and resource to help in your journey with Jesus available in the entrance for you. Please collect that after the service. Can we just close our eyes just for a few moments, moments longer? Jesus says, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then he says, this cup is the new covenant of my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. This is a moment of thanksgiving where we examine our own hearts and we just say, thank you, Jesus, for coming to die on the cross for my sins. It's a table of grace. We, we receive things that we did not deserve, His blessing, His favor, His salvation. It's a moment for us just to consider our own hearts and examine our own hearts and begin just to appreciate the price paid for our salvation. Just to put things right between you and God. Some of you just need to cast your anxieties upon Him for He cares for you. Some of you got to just submit and surrender that struggle, that sin, whatever it is to Him. Some of you just need to say, God, I need your grace to intervene in this circumstance, this situation, because in myself, I cannot overcome this, but I know you can. God's grace is so much bigger than our worst fear, our worst failure, our worst sin. He's ready to move in your hearts, your lives. It's also a time for us to consider the path laid that we hear called to follow Jesus and also power that's made available to every single one of us to overcome and to pursue the life He's called us to. So just, just speak to the Lord in your own way just to say thank you. I celebrate your grace. Thank you for the price paid. Thank you for the path laid. Thank you for the power available. Just speak to the Lord before we partake. Let's take the bread. Let's eat it representing the body of Jesus. It was broken and torn for us that we might find healing. cup speaks of the new covenant of blood that removes our sin our sorrow and our shame let's partake thank you Jesus for your wonderful blood we thank you for your body that was broken and torn for us that we might find wholeness and healing and forgiveness Lord we thank you for coming to this earth demonstrating your love Lord we thank you that we can sit at your table enjoying eternal peace, enjoying, enjoying eternal communion with you forever, all because of your body, body and all because of your blood. Lord, I pray for your grace and your peace to be multiplied to every boy, every girl here, every adult. Lord, that each one would just begin to encounter you, Holy Spirit, in new and fresh ways. I pray for your protection, your blessing upon each one of them. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. What a wonderful word. What a wonderful message. Isn't it wonderful that we know that the kindness of the King visits us and that He has prepared a table for us, a table of grace, a table of peace, a table of provision, of blessing, of hope and joy. Everything we need, He has prepared a table for us. All we need to do is come to the table. Well, church, we're going to see you on Sunday, this Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. I know Chris has prepared a beautiful word. We filmed it again in our kitchen for this Sunday. So join us again online and have a beautiful and blessed day. And God bless you, church. We love you.